from the book of Daniel. Then I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him by prayer and pleas for mercy with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and just decrees. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name. To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us, open shame, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God by walking in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Now, therefore, O our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his pleas for mercy. And for your own sake, O Lord, make your face to shine upon your sanctuary, which is desolate. O my God, incline your ear and hear. For we do not present our pleas before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great mercy. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. Delay not for your own sake, O my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. Here ends the reading. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day, the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been observed as a period of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance, born of a faithful heart that dwells continually on God's word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray. O oh God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Bless us this Lenten tide, so that in the power of the Holy Spirit we may come to Easter with glad hearts, and keep the feast in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome to receive ashes as an emblem and reminder of our repentance before God and of our humility. Please form a single line down the center if you wish to receive ashes this evening. Remember, daughter of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, daughter of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, daughter of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, daughter of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, son of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, daughter of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, daughter of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, son of Adam, that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, son of Adam, that you are dust, to dust you shall return.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved, since it is our intention to come to the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is proper that we diligently examine ourselves as St. Paul exhorts us. For this holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort and strengthening of those who humbly confess their sins and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But if we thus examine ourselves, we shall find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we cannot in any way set ourselves free. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us and has taken upon himself our nature so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and for us and for our deliverance suffer death and all that we by our sins have deserved. And that we should more confidently believe this and be strengthened by our faith in cheerful obedience to his holy will, he has instituted the holy sacrament of his supper, in which he feeds us with his body and gives us to drink of his blood. Therefore, whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup firmly believing the words of Christ, dwells in Christ, and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should do this also in remembrance of him, proclaiming his death, that he was delivered for our offenses, and raised again for our justification, and, giving him our most hearty thanks, take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another, as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink of this one cup. And now I ask you in the presence of God, who searches the heart, do you sincerely confess that you have sinned against God and deserved his wrath and punishment? I do so confess. Truly you should confess, for Holy Scripture declares, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Do you heartily repent of all your sins, committed in thought, word, and deed? I do repent. Truly you should repent, as did the penitent sinners King David, who prayed for a contrite heart, Peter, who wept bitterly, the sinful woman, the prodigal son, and others. Do you sincerely believe that God, by grace, for Jesus' sake, will forgive you all your sins? I do so believe. Truly you should believe, for Holy Scripture declares, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you promise that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will amend your sinful life? I do so promise. Truly you should so promise, for Christ the Lord says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Finally, do you believe that through me, a called servant of God, you will receive the forgiveness of all your sins? I do so believe. Truly you should believe, for Christ the Lord says, whoever hears you hears me, and if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May he comfort your heart by his holy absolution, and strengthen you by his sacraments, that your joy may be full. Peace be with you. Amen. Bye.
sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, love out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, 
a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied. And I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. Here ends the reading of the first lesson.
and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us confess our holy faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with hymn 452.
Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, we are entering the season of Lent. This is a penitential season. That means that a focal point of the season is penitence, which is defined in the dictionary as the quality or state of being penitent, sorrow for sins or faults. And the word penitent, in turn, means feeling or expressing humble or regretful pain or sorrow for sins or offenses. Repentant. We are, of course, sorry for our sins all the time, all year round. Every Sunday, at the beginning of the service, we express to the Lord our regret for the wrong we have done, and we seek God's pardon and forgiveness for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ. This is as it should be. But in the season of Lent, the penitential season of Lent, this process can and should go deeper than usual. Step back from your life and look at yourself. What patterns of griping and grousing have you fallen into? What patterns of laziness and irresponsibility have you fallen into? What patterns of selfishness and insensitivity to others have you fallen into? Measure your life against God's word, as written in the epistle to the Colossians. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience bearing with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Measure your life against God's word, as written in the epistle to the Galatians. Through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. Lent is a time not only to look at your specific mistakes and failures, but it is a time to look at your whole life. What kind of impact are you having on others? Do you build others up, or do you tear them down? Do you encourage and support others, or do you judge and criticize them? Do you love and help others according to their needs, or do you use others for your own selfish purposes? Is the first question you ask of yourself in any situation what does God want, or is it, what do I want? This kind of self-analysis is more difficult than most people care to admit. Human pride being what it is, we usually want to think well of ourselves, and we usually want to believe that others think well of us too. It's not easy to admit our flaws and mistakes or to come to realize that other people already know about those flaws and mistakes. Taking responsibility for the harm we have done is accompanied by embarrassment and shame. But this is Lent. This is a time that has been set aside in the life of the Church and in our lives as Christians precisely so that we can do what is hard and acknowledge what is true. Let God's Spirit lead you down that difficult Lenten pathway of honesty and humility, that necessary Lenten pathway of penitence. Take stock of your life and admit your sins. God, of course, is already aware of your 
your sins and sees them. But this season is a time for you to become aware of them and to see them and to turn away from them. And then, in your penitence, please remember that the season of Lent is also a time to become aware in an ever deeper way of all that Jesus has done to forgive your sins and to deliver you from the guilt and power of sin. Lent is a time to see the cross and to see Jesus dying on the cross for you, to justify you in his mercy and to give you a new beginning with God and a new beginning in all your relationships and in your life as a whole. In today's lesson from his second epistle to the Corinthians, St. Paul writes, We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. All those sins, all those flaws and mistakes, and all that shame and embarrassment, Jesus took upon himself and carried to the cross. And there, Jesus redeemed us from the sins, atoned for the flaws and mistakes, and covered over the shame and embarrassment. St. John, in his first epistle, encourages all of us, in penitence and in faith, to seek what God now offers, and to receive what God now gives. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Jesus himself says, as recorded in St. John's Gospel, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. As we now head into Lent, into our Lenten penitence, and into the new life with which God fills us on the other side of this penitence, through the death and resurrection of his Son. We do so while listening with grateful hearts to the words of St. Peter in his first epistle. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. So, let us pray that we would have a blessed Lent. Let us pray that God leads us to have a penitential Lent. Let us pray that God gives us a grace-filled Christ-centered Lent. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We thank you for his holy life on earth, for his precious suffering and death, and for his glorious victory over sin and evil. Give us a living faith in him and a share in the life that he has obtained for us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the Holy Church throughout the world, and especially for the churches linked to us in the fellowship of faith and life. We pray for the ministers of your word and sacraments, and especially for our pastors and teachers. We pray for the rulers of the nations, and especially for the rulers of our state and nation. Grant that all the positions of power and responsibility may carry out their tasks in the light of your will, and promote the true welfare of the community and of all mankind always remembering that they must finally stand before Christ to be judged by him. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all Christian people, that they may live in faith and in reverence for you, in humble obedience to you, and in brotherly love to one another. We plead for all who desire or have need of our prayers, the sick, the sorrowing, the lonely, the downcast, and the bereaved. Give them those gifts both of body and soul, which will be for their present and eternal good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We praise you for all who have departed this life in the faith of Christ, and pray that we may share with them in the glorious resurrection to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we know that the events of this world are in your hands that you are always working all things out for the good of your people. We pray that you would watch over and protect those who minister on your behalf in Ukraine. We ask especially that you would watch over those who may be injured in the conflict that is raging there, and that you would comfort the families of those who perish. Use these events for your glory, and to move your people to prayer and acts of compassion. Grant peace, we pray, in mercy, Lord. Peace in our time will send us. For there is none on earth but you, none other, to defend us. You only, Lord, can fight for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things we humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. And to you, O Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, be glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. The 
Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.